Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this episode of Chess Basics, things every chess player ought to know. Uh, today we're going to continue our look at the Rui Lopez opening with a defense known as the Berlin defense. So uh, let's put it on the board. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b4. Now, up till now, um, all the positions we've looked at have followed uh, have started with the move a6 from black. Um, and today we're going to look at the most popular option alternative, the most popular alternative a to a6, which is the move knight to f6. And this is known as the Berlin defense. So uh, black doesn't waste time kicking the light squared bishop. Uh, he just immediately goes after this pawn in the center. And uh, first, let's look at the main line. So I'm going to, uh, the main line is white castles and black takes the pawn. And uh, this is different, uh, this is quite a contrast to the, um, to the open variation of the Ruy Lopez, which is not the most popular uh, line. So after, after the bishop has been kicked back, um, for some reason this is no longer the most popular move and, and uh, black declines to take that pawn. Although you can still play it and that's the open variation of the Ruy Lopez. And uh, the difference shows up in just a move or two. So white uh, continues with the move d4, trying to undermine this pawn here. And if he takes, uh, if black were to take back, then this uh, rook moves, skewers the, or pins, pins a knight against the king and gives white a good game. So instead of, uh, instead of taking that pawn, what black does is black uh, retreats the bishop to d6. And this is what's different about the Berlin defense, uh, the Berlin opening. The um, knight is attacking the bishop here, whereas in the other lines, after a6, the bishop has gone to a square like uh, a4, or even back to uh, b3, if, uh, if uh, b4 was b5 was played there. So this uh, knight move doesn't come with a tempo, but in this uh, in this variation, after um, after the knight to d6, um, the white has to do something right away because this bishop is just hanging. So the line usually goes, uh, we're still following the main line, bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, and pawn takes pawn, getting the pawn back. And so now the material is even, this pawn is under attack, has to get out of the way, and then white takes the queens off, and uh, follows up with uh, knight c3. So uh, this is uh, the uh, kind of the starting position of the uh, Berlin Wall, if you... <laughs> Uh, when it was called that uh, when Kramnik was using this to uh, to defend uh, or to fight for the world championship against Gary Kasparov. He used this as a drawing weapon. He would play the black side of this against Gary, and uh, he was quite successful with this. So uh, um, before that, it was thought that this was just a, a great position for white. Um, the reason it was thought to be good for white is that um, he's got three pawns here against black's four pawns, but they're all lined up on the same file so we can use these three pawns in the end game to hold these guys back and then with an extra pawn here um, he effectively is a pawn up in the end game so it was thought that uh, white could just go directly to an end game and, and uh, win but it turns out to be not so simple there's quite a few uh, uh, there's, there's quite a distance between here and the end game and black has some advantages one advantage black has is he has the bishop pair and um, the two bishops working together cover all the squares of the board, and in particular the light squared bishop here has no opposing bishop, so uh, so um, black can can uh, look forward to some advantage. Just it's a material advantage actually, um, but it doesn't really come into play until the position is opened up a little bit. Right now, black has some immediate problems of uh, he can't castle and he needs to get his king to safety. If, uh, if white can quickly develop. Uh, and get an attack going against the king, then white white has some chances. So um, so it's a double-edged position. Um, it ends up going into uh, kind of a slow maneuvering phase here. Black has a lot of uh, different moves he can play. I think um, he wants to stop this move, bishop to uh, g5, so one idea is to play here. Um, another idea is to just move the king out of the way of that check, um, or um, move the knight back to e7. These moves have all been played. And uh, if 
from White's point of view, um, you know, he wants to get his pieces out. He wants to harass Black's king and maybe trade some things and head for the end game. Um, Black wants to keep it complicated. He wants to open up lines, um, develop his bishops, try and get them active, and uh, go after this pawn here. Um, one kind of weakness in White's position is this pawn is somewhat far advanced. Um, let's get rid of some of these other guys. Um, and uh, it's, it's outrun its support from the other pawn, so it's, it's being supported by pieces, and black can tie white down by uh, attacking this pawn. Um, but he also needs to get his king to safety. So there's a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's a long distance between here and the end game, and so, uh, like I said, it turns into kind of a slow maneuvering game for a long period. So uh, you can play this as white, um, and play for a win. It's not like this is a guaranteed draw. And, uh, it's unlikely that your opponent will be as skilled as uh, Vladimir Kramnik in holding the draw. Um, but this kind of position is not to everyone's taste. You know, it's somewhat dry with the queens off, not as many exciting tactical possibilities. So let me give you another option to play against the Berlin defense, which is, uh, let's back up way back here, right after black plays knight to f6 attacking the pawn. Um, there's two moves that are popular here. One move is um, knight to c3, and this is a transposition. This transposes into what's called the four knights variation. Um, I'm not really recommending this unless you want to study it. This is a, a different opening entirely, and it has some of its own unique tricks. For example, uh, black can play this move uh, knight to d4 attacking the bishop, although it's defended and uh, effectively sacrificing a pawn. And it turns out, uh, well, it's thought that this uh, pawn sack gives black a good game. So uh, I'm not really recommending that unless you study it. Uh, you, you can play that, of course, um, but uh, you would want to do a little research first. Now, uh, this other move you can play here, which is uh, just a simple move, d3. Defend the pawn, and then you get into um, just a more normal kind of Rui Lopez uh, position. So the game might continue, say, bishop to c5, castle, uh, d6, c3, black castles. And the idea with c3 is to uh, build up for a center attack. And the black can still kick the bishop, and the bishop might come around to a4, and then to uh, b3 or c2, reinforcing the center. And you get a typical uh, Rui Lopez type of position. So if you're Familiar with the Rui Lopez from um, from some of those other lines you may have played, uh, you should be comfortable playing this. So that's that's my recommendation here, and I think that's uh, going to wrap it up for the Berlin defense. Um, next week, next episode rather, I'm going to take a look at other alternatives uh, on the uh, third move here. Uh, we looked at a6, the Morphy defense uh, knight here is uh, knight f6 is the Berlin defense. Um, there, are, there are a lot of other moves. There's the Steinitz defense. There's the Schliemann defense, uh, f5, a, sort of a counterattacking move. And uh, the Cordell, uh, which I uh, recently played in an over-the-board game, so you can look at that, and uh, the Bird defense. So uh, we'll take a brief overview of those other less, less common alternatives on the third move in our next episode. See you then. Bye.